Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about uh, time limit presentation of LTA system. In module 1 we discussed about the properties of system. There are different properties we discuss like uh, linearity, time invariant, causality and stability and so on. The system satisfies the properties of linearity and the time invariance. It is called as a LTA system. There are different different representations are there. The, basically, there are we we'll use the time domain presentation and the frequency domain presentation. So, time domain presentation of LTA system. Uh, basically, the system is represented in terms of block diagram. You, in this case, uh, the discrete time system is represented with the input is x of n and the output is y of n, and the system transmission transformation operator is given by t. So, the y of n is given by T of x of n. Now the type of time domain, repre time domain representations are impulse response representation, log domain representation, differential and the difference equation representations. So in your syllabus, we are going to discuss about uh, the impulse response representation. So impulse response representation means, uh, basically we will consider the input as uh, impulsive this x of n is input that is uh, excited to a system uh, results in output that type of output we will call it as impulse response so input is impulse then the response of the system is called as impulse response uh, there are two types of uh, systems one is discrete time system another one is uh, continuous time system for a discrete time system the impulse response representation we will call it as a convolution sum whereas uh, for a continuous time system we will call it as a convolution integral. So now we will discuss about uh, the derivation for a convolution sum. So I represented the system here with input is x of n and output is y of n and the transformation operator is t. So the y of n is equal to t of x of n. Now consider the input the x of n uh, with uh, its samples from minus 2 to plus 2. So I given the samples uh, at n is equal to minus 2 it is having the minus 1. At n is equal to minus 1 it is having the amplitude as 2. At n is equal to 0 you are having the amplitude as 2 and at n is equal to 1 you are having the amplitude as 1. And at n is equal to 2 you are having the amplitude as 0.5. Now this input x of n can be represented as the weighted sum of shifted impulses. Or uh, you know that uh, the impulse signal is represented as uh, its value is 1 at n is equal to 0. And usually we represent the impulse signal as delta of n. So its value is 1 at n is equal to 0 and 0 when n is not equal to 0. So based on that I can represent my x of n as so x of n is equal to x of minus 2 into delta of n plus 2 plus x of minus 1 into delta of n plus 1 plus x of 0 into delta of n plus x of 1 into delta of n minus 1 plus x of 2 into delta of n minus 2. So totally 5 samples are there and uh, here delta of n is shifted right by 2 units at the same time the delta of n is shifted left by 2 units. So this can be represented as x of n is equal to with respect to the summation the summation k for minus 2 to plus 2 x of k into delta of n minus k. In general, this x of n can be represented as because uh, generally the signal will be the infinite signal. So in general, we can represent it as uh, summation over minus infinity to plus infinity x of k into delta of n minus k. So we know that uh, the y of n is equal to t of x of n and uh, I substituted x of n in that uh, equation. So t of summation over k is for minus input plus input x of k into delta of n minus k. Now I will interchange that and I will consider that uh, system operator inside the summation. So we know that when the input is delta of n, the impulse response is h of n. Now the input if I will consider delta of n minus k, that is the shifted impulses, then output will be h of n minus k. So therefore the t of delta of n minus k, n minus k is equal to h of n minus k. So that my output y of n equation will be 
the summation of minus infinity plus infinity x of q into h of n minus k. The above equation is called as convolution sum. And uh, we can represent it as y of n is equal to x of n star h of n, where star is the convolution operator. So for a convolution operation, uh, basically it requires two signals. Here we will consider the two signals as uh, one is x of n, other one as h of n. So next we will discuss uh, how to solve the problems on convolution sum. So in the problems they will give two signals. One is uh, x of n, another one is h of n or uh, they can present it as x1 and x2 also. So here uh, but for, to perform the convolution operation so uh, use the equation y of n that is y of n is output here and x of n is my input and uh, h of n is uh, impulse response. So with respect to the summation we will write the equation as y of n is equal to k for minus n plus infinity x of k into h of n minus k. Now we will the steps to solve the problems in convolution sum. So in the problem the problem uh, it could be specified x of n and h of n. So the first step is uh, so you have to plot x of k and h of k is uh, by replacing the variable n by k. So usually the independent variable will be n. Now you would replace that independent variable n by k. And the second step is uh, the time reversal operation because uh, an equation, y of n equation, we are having h of n minus k. To plot h of n minus k, first I need to plot h of minus k. So we will perform a time reversal operation that is h of k is uh, hold in or reversed by to h of minus k. Then I uh, will shift the signal h of minus k with respect to respect to the variable n. So either it will be a left shift or else or it will be a right shift. So basically we will shift the signal from left to right. So then fourth step is uh, to multiply the two signals x of k and h of n minus k the based on the overlapping condition. When there is a overlap you have to multiply the signal and you will get the output. When there is no overlap output will be zero. And the final step is uh, we will add, add x of k and uh, h of n minus k uh, and because we are using a summation operator over there based on the limit we will add the signal. So finally we will get y of n and we will plot that y of n. So these are the steps which is uh, this steps to solve the problems related to convolution sum. Now, we will discuss one problem. The find the convolution of the signal x of n is equal to alpha to the power n into u of n with the signal h of n is equal to u of n and the absolute value of alpha is less than 1. So, here to solve the problem, uh, so I have to find out the convolved signal that is y of n. So, y of n is equal to x of n star h of n. So, I tried the equation, the convolution sum equations will be given by y of n is equal to the summation over minus input plus infinity x of k into h of n minus k. Now, uh, the first step is I have to plot x of k and h of n minus k. So, given x of n and h of n is given, so replace the variable n by k. So, here the alpha is less than 1 the given. So basically it is a decaying exponential signal, okay? discrete time signal. Discrete time signal. So x of k, I'll plot the signal uh, x of k is equal to alpha to the power of k in, alpha to the alpha to the power k into u of k. So u of k is defined for k is greater than or equal to 0. If its value is 1 at k is greater than or equal to 0, its value is 0 for k, k less than 0, the unit step function. So the signal 1 is your x of k. Uh, similarly, you have to plot h of k. So h of k is, uh, is equal to u of k now. So u of k is uh, defined which value is 1. Okay, is greater than or equal to 0. 0 for k less than 0. So h of k is equal to u of k. 
Um, now the independent variable that is the variable is in the x-axis is k now. Now uh, in this convolution sum equation there are two signals are there. One is x of k and x of n minus k. So x of k uh, will keep as a fixed signal. And the h of n minus k the second signal uh, will shift from minus infinity to plus infinity. To obtain h of n minus k uh, first I will Hold. I mean, I'll draw h of n minus k at n is equal to zero. That is, uh, when I'll substitute n is equal to zero in that equation h of n minus k, then I'll get h of minus k. So the meaning is just reverse the signal. So reverse the signal. So we're folding the signal, so you'll get h of n minus k at n is equal to zero. So the third signal is h of n minus k at uh, n is equal to zero there. And uh, in the x-axis, uh, that uh, time index values you have to mention there. So now the signal is from minus infinity to zero. The previously it is from zero to infinity. Now the signal is from minus infinity to zero. So uh, at k is equal to zero, we just write it as a lad hand there. So zero plus n, so you'll get n. Because other part is minus infinity, so it is uh, minus infinity to n. Now to obtain the convolution, now I have to multiply this x of k n h of n minus k. So to obtain y of n, I have to multiply the two signals x of k n h of n minus k. So I will consider the different conditions now. So the case 1, uh, based on the time index uh, value there n, it is when n is less than 0, the case 1, then n is less than 0. Uh, the the signal I'll compare x of k and h of n minus k and with n is less than zero you can observe with x of k and h of n minus k when n is less than zero the time indexed value so there is no overlap between x of k and h of n minus k so when there is no overlap uh, when one signal amplitude is zero other signal amplitude is uh, one so zero is multiplied with one the answer is zero so therefore the output y of n is equal to zero so when n is less than 0, the output is 0. Now the second condition is when n is greater than or equal to 0. So when n is greater than or equal to 0, now I place this n which is greater than or equal to 0. Now if I will multiply x of k and h of n minus k, there is a overlap. So we can observe the overlap condition that is from 0 till n there is a overlap when n is greater than 0 there is no overlap at the same time when it is less than also there is no overlap so the another condition is uh, there is a overlap from 0 to n so now the output equation y of n will be the summation of k is 0 to n so alpha to the power k and then now u of k what is the amplitude of u of k it's 1 what is the amplitude of u of n minus k is 1. So u of k into u of n minus k, 1 into 1, it's 1. And uh, the overlapping region is from 0 to n. That I would write it in a summation. So k is equal to 0 to n, alpha to the power k. Now, now we'll use the standard equation that is a, the finite series uh, summation expression. That is uh, when n is equal to 0 to n, alpha to the power k can be given by 1 minus alpha to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha. So if I will substitute that in this equation, uh, then I get the answer as 1 minus alpha to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha. So this is my final answer. So when n is less than 0, the output is 0. When n is greater than or equal to 0, answer is 1 minus alpha to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha. So um, there are three types of problems are there. One is in terms of the convolution sum. So generally based on the signal, generally I will consider two infinite signals. Two infinite signal. And uh, the second problem, second type of problem is one is finite, another one is infinite. And third type of problem is uh, both are finite signals. So when both the signals are infinite, uh, generally there will be a uh, the two conditions. 
two conditions when it is uh, 